We'll go right to the phone calls. First up is John in New Jersey. Hi, John. Hey, Hank. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. I was raised Catholic, and I currently go to a Protestant church, and uh, I'm a pretty new believer a couple of years, and I really love the Lord. I love Jesus. And I guess my question is, I'm kind of torn between Protestant church, or the Presbyterian church, and the Catholic church. There's a lot of differences, and I think about what... Christ told Peter to build his church. Was that the Catholic church he's, he was building? I mean, I just, I'm, I'm kind of torn. I just wanted to know your opinion on that. No, it wasn't. Remember that Peter's affirmation is that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is the rock, that Jesus Christ is the foundation. So Peter was affirming that Jesus Christ was Messiah. The affirmation that Peter made is an affirmation that is foundational to Christianity. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He lived the perfect life. He died. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and therefore, Jesus Christ has left us with a commission. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'm with you even to the end of the age. So Jesus Christ is the true Messiah. He is the true rock. He is the true foundation. Now, what came out of that is an early Christian church that carried on this message. There was a creedal statement that can be dated very, very close, even within weeks of Messiah's murder, that eventually became codified in a creed. That creed informed the church. And the church began to do the very things that Jesus Christ had instructed them to do. The first of which, of course, is to worship God. I mean, that's what we're created for. But we also want to have tremendous intimacy with one another, fellowship within the body of Christ, and then we want to be equipped to go out and and impact the world. So uh, the issue is not as much evangelism as being equipped for evangelism, because if you're equipped, you're going to impact the world. So what does that mean? Today we carry that heritage from the time of the early Christian church to the present. The gates of hell have not prevailed against the church. There was a great schism that took place between East and West in 1054. There's another great schism that took place at the time of the Reformation. The church at that time in the West had, well, they had become addicted to many different excesses, excesses like indulgences. So you had a guy like Johann Tetzel say, as soon as the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Well, Martin Luther was outraged by the excesses of the Roman Catholic Church, and again, there was a great schism that took place. Out of that great schism, we still have an Orthodox Church, we still have a Catholic Church, we still have Protestant churches, but within those churches, you can find false churches and true churches. You can find, in essence, those who genuinely follow the Lord and his teachings and his instructions as they are passed down through the centuries, and those who kind of make it up as they go along. And so, with respect to Roman Catholicism, I've said this for 30 years in the broadcast, it's a true church with what I would consider significant error. But in saying that, I say that with gentleness and humility, because some of the greatest minds in the Christian church today, and some of the people doing most with respect to common cause issues, are Roman Catholics. Not only that, I mean, who could do without Augustine? Who could do without Aquinas? So the Roman Catholic Church has a very significant heritage, and there are great Roman Catholics to the present I've mentioned many of them on the broadcast. I think of the great apologists today, like Jay Richards, and many others could be mentioned. Within Protestantism, same thing. Jack Graham, 
He's the head of a Southern Baptist church in Texas, a very influential church. I've known Jack for years. There's a lot of things I could say about Jack, but the best thing I could say about him and the most authentic thing I could say about him is that he's the absolute real deal. And so there are genuine Christians and Christian leaders in all of these various expressions of Christianity. The big thing is you have to be committed to essential Christian doctrine. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Hey, you got it. Uh, When I say essential Christian doctrine, I am, of course, talking about mere Christianity as C.S. Lewis expressed it. 